Hello! So I really hope that you're feeling just like this guy winning and crossing the finish line because you're also finishing the academy but when you reach this closing moment in your uh, experience as a team leader you'll be finishing and achieving a lot of stuff with your team for sure. So when we talk about closing uh, again we're talking about a list of actions so it's a thing that is not meant to happen uh, for more than 20 days, 25 days uh, but the goal is to make sure that you're passing knowledge forward and closing your team experience the best way possible. So again, the, for the last time, we're assessing the doubts of our little Mauricio. And the first one is, what is my responsibility after my successor is elected? So what are the things that I need to do after I have someone that is going to take on my job as a team leader or as a VP, for example. The other one is, and then. So how do I finish my experience the best way possible? And then how to make how not to make the same mistakes that my successors made with me so if you ask to 100 people inside isaac if they had a good um, transition there uh, 60 70 of them are going to say that their predecessors did not deliver a good transition for them but usually what happens is that when we are the ones that need to deliver transition we don't do this also so how do we, can you make sure that you're actually being the one that is not going to make the same mistakes as your predecessor may be made with you uh, so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about closing. So the topics that we will be the, the discussing here, the first one is the team debrief. So what are the things that we need to do in order to make sure that our team experience is very well debriefed and that all the conclusions and insights that you need to take and that all your members need to take of that experience, they are actually taken. The second one is the transition. So actually passing the knowledge, the learnings and everything forward. And finally, as we did in the building stage, there is a moment, and this moment is very, very important, for each individual inside the team to debrief the experience and see what are the things that they achieved as an individual and not as a team. When we're talking about team debrief, we start very simple, so reporting on the results. So it's very important that we have as a team a report on what are the things that we did, what are the goals that we achieved, what were our goals in the beginning, and everything very clear. So a suggestion is just to make a start-stop continue of things that happen in your term. So what are the things that you would start if you were starting uh, another time uh, your term what are the things that you would stop things that you were doing but you would not do again and what are the things that you think that were done and should continue uh, because they're actually good that's the first thing to do very simple the other one is to review the team development plan so remember that in the building stage we were talking about the map so what is the north that the team needs to follow and who the team wants to be uh, in the end of the experience so this is the time in which you're actually reviewing uh, everything again so seeing if you reached actually the treasure and if you reached what you want to, to be as a team and this space is very important for people to finish the experience okay so we actually achieved and we have this sense of achievement as a team as a team the second one is to have a moment of final feedbacks so it's actually a very important gift that you can give to your members and they can give to you if in, a, in the end of your experience you have a space in which people are giving you constructive or also positive feedbacks on how was your performance in the whole team cycle. So it's very important to host these spaces to also debrief the experience the best way possible. And then we go to the transition. So when you're talking about transition, what are the three main key points uh, to discuss. The first one is the knowledge and skills transition. So it's very important that uh, both predecessor and successor, so remember that in building also when you were the person starting you were also pushing for transition. It's very important that this connection happens between two people and the most important thing is to not is that this is not something theoretical, so you're just sharing a lot of materials, you're sharing a lot of things and explaining, but you're also doing things together. So if, you're, if you are a person that is ending your term and there is another person starting, and, if, and you have an EP meeting, you have a sales meeting, call this person to go with you, go together, do things together, work together, because that's the most important uh, way and channel for you to actually make sure that your successor is understanding what it actually is to be uh, to work in your role, to work in your positions and do the things that you're doing. So if you want to make sure that everything you learned is being passed forward, make sure that your transition is very practical and you two are working together.
Second one is very practical. So what are the documents, passwords, uh, credentials, keys uh, that you need to pass to your successor um, in order for him to continue the work that you're doing. And also suggestions of next steps. So this is the moment in which transition is a little bit less uh, functional and a little bit more in terms of learnings. So what are the learnings, the behaviors, the things that you discovered uh, during your team uh, experience and you really wish that your successors uh, don't make the same mistakes or continue doing because you already made a mistake or you already took a learning uh, that you can pass forward. So make sure that you get a moment for that because in my opinion this is one of the most important parts of transition. Because in Isaac, a lot of things change, but the learnings that we take, the behaviors that we get from our experiences are, are actually very valuable for our successors. And then we go to the individual debrief. So if you remember also in building, we were talking about the initial LDA. So the first assessment that you take uh, and when you're starting your experience uh, in order to assess what is your current state. So now, since we're finishing, um, what is the current state right now so that we can see the variation how did how much did we grow how much did we develop ourselves inside the, the experience the way to do the LDA is the same way it's through expo and then the steps are here in the slide then the final 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 thing how can you make sure that you're reviewing for the second time uh, the personal development plan of your members. So if you remember in building also, we made, we built a personal development plan that had two things. What are the things that you, that your member want to develop in themselves based on the LDA and based on what are the things that he wants uh, to develop as skills. This is one. And then the other one, what were the achievements that he wanted to do in the quarter? So by now, when you're doing closing, you should have already done one personal development plan in the end of the quarter, assessed, created another one, and now you're reviewing the second one. So this review of the second one is also the review of the whole experience as a whole. So make sure that you're actually getting a space to review, to say, to give your feedbacks and your impressions in terms of uh, your members' performance, and they are also giving a space for them to review themselves and assess themselves on how they are right now after the experience. This is for sure done in a one-to-one, -one, just like the ones that we did before. When you're talking about closing, very, very simple, the same thing as building. You can for sure totally implement closing in three team meetings and one one-to-one. -one. Uh, if, if these meetings and one-to-ones are, are done well in a good way, and you're actually dedicating a lot of time for um, preparing them. So it's very simple, if you have any doubts, before you go to your activity and to your final test, please make sure to approach me because now we're going to put these things in practice.